So why are minimum wage workers paying lower taxes than billionaires? And what might that have to do with billionaires funding right-wing, basically, uh, uh, treason movements? Check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. The, uh, the news is just relentless. It, it, you know, and, and the Trump BS, and now you've got the right-wingers and the, and the DeVos family and these other right-wing billionaires funding these right-wing groups that are going out into the streets saying, no, oh, no, we, you know, I mean, it's like snowflakes, right? They're, they're, oh, we can't handle being locked up for, you know, being in our houses for a week or month or three months or whatever. Oh, poor conservative snowflakes. The big question, though, that the media is asking is why? You know, I caught the last hour of uh, Joe Scarborough's show this morning, you know, Morning Joe, and he was, uh, he, uh, and he seemed to be seriously troubled by this. You know, why is it that right-wing billionaires are funding protests of shelter-in-place orders in the states, including against Republican governors? Now, the largest protest, of course, was against a Democratic female governor, and, you know, the groups that show up are notoriously misogynistic and racist and all that kind of stuff. But, but still, why? Why is it that Fox News is pushing so hard why would, to reopen the economy? Why would Rupert Murdoch or Lachlan Murdoch, uh, you know, the billionaire owners of Fox News, be pushing this so hard? You get, you know, Dr. Phil, the disgraced shrink who lost his license for inappropriate relationships with his, with his clients on Fox News going, well, I, you know, a few people might die, but no big deal. I mean, you know, literally not saying that, but <clears throat> the effect of it. Why is it that these TV doctor pundits over on Fox News are saying that, oh, you know, two or three percent of the population dies, that's accept acceptable. When Dr. Oz said that, you know, there was all this blowback and he, and he came back and he said, because he was talking about the children can go back to school and he came back and he said, well, you know, two or three percent of the kids aren't going to die. No, probably not. It'll probably be, you know, a tenth of one percent. Uh, instead, they'll take the disease home to their parents and their grandparents, and, and you know, uh, two two percent of their parents are going to die, and twenty percent of their grandparents are going to die. I mean, why? Why are these people saying this? Why are they doing this? Why are they willing to sacrifice our elders and our vulnerable Americans? You know, over over thirty five percent of Americans are obese. That is a that is the outside of being elderly, being you know in a nursing home, basically. That is the largest risk group right now: overweight and hypertension and diabetic. That is the largest risk group. That's not just old people. That's thirty nine percent of Americans. The old people are only sixteen percent of Americans. Why is it that they're willing to sacrifice these people? Is it possible that the reason that these right-wing billionaires are pushing these efforts is because any more stimulus packages are going to drive the national debt up to the point where even Republicans are going to have to agree that it's time to raise taxes on billionaires? I mean, I can't come up with a, you know, a, 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 a more direct and simple answer than that. Why else would they not care about public health? Why would they put the, the economy above public health? Well, it's, it's, I think it's fairly obvious. If this country, every month that this country is shut down is going to require about $2 trillion of stimulus to keep us going. It's just that simple. And where's that $2 trillion going to come from? Ultimately, it's going to come from taxes paid by billionaires. And they know it. And if there's one thing right-wing billionaires don't like, it's paying taxes. You know, over, over the years, they've managed, they, they got LBJ to drop the top tax rate from 91% down to 74%. And then they got Reagan to drop it all the way down to 25%. It's down now. A lot of them are paying 22%. I mean, you know, billionaires pay less in taxes than do working people on the bottom half of the wage scale. Working people making eight bucks an hour pay more in taxes than billionaires in America. And they want to keep the billionaires want to keep it that way. I don't know. Do you do you have an answer to why they are doing this? 
you know, I, I, I think follow the money is, you know, the, the advice that uh, Mark Felt, Deep Throat, gave to Woodward and Bernstein is always a good, it's always good advice. Follow the friggin' money. Yesterday, I posted a tweet on Twitter, and it's, it's uh, you know, I want to uh, more and more kind of step back from the general craziness. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to try and just take a fast, or at least on Saturday, take a fast from the news and, and uh, just, you know, read a novel, take a bath, go for a walk, um, enjoy the, enjoy nature, I think. I'm going to try to do that. I've just been up to my eyeballs in this stuff for, for uh, you know, a couple of months now. And, and, of course, you know, it's my job to do this. But I think that for all of our mental health, <laughs> it's a good idea if every now and then we back off. And this, this, this uh, tweet that I posted yesterday got a huge response over on Twitter. You, you, you can go over to my Twitter feed. It's Tom underscore Hartman, T-H-O-M underscore Hartman with two N's. And what I wrote was, and, and this came out of Louise and I took a walk, uh, you know, again down the Columbia River, and and it's the uh, it's on the takeoff and landing pattern for the for the the airport here in Portland, and you know if you walk briskly, you walk about three miles in an hour. You you walk, yeah, I mean that's that's a good brisk walk is three miles an hour, and our walk was about forty minutes. We walk about two miles, and. I didn't see or hear a single plane land or take off. And as we're walking along the river, I looked up at the sky and there was literally not a single contrail in the sky, not a single jet vapor trail in the sky. And, and Louise and I were talking about how this was like when we were kids. And so this is what I tweeted. I tweeted, not a single jet vapor trail in the sky above Portland today. I remember being five years old laying in a hammock in our backyard in Lansing, Michigan, watching a single jet carving a long arc across the sky. It was 1956, and there was as little air traffic in 1956 as there is today. A statistic, by the way, I got from NPR yesterday. And then I asked the question, what do you remember? And got just some of the most beautiful responses. People talking about June bugs and, you know, warm summer nights and and butterflies, lots and lots of butterflies, and, and honeybees, and you know, people just remembering life, remembering what the world was like, you know, before this, uh, you know, the, the recent insanity of Trump and coronavirus and all that stuff, but also, um, you know, the last 20 or 30 years of population pressure and global warming and the, and the, the insect holocaust and all that. So, you know, I, I toss that out there if you, if you want to share some of, you know, your memories that you think are important. Um, the Governor J.B. Pritzker yesterday announced that the Midwest governor, you know, Trump did his press conference yesterday. I, I was so pissed off by it. I dropped the F-bomb in a text message to one of my employees. I mean, uh, or one of my colleagues, one of, my, <laughs> one of the people who works with me on this show. And it, it, it was just like, it, I, I, I just can't do it. I can't watch this guy anymore. So anyhow, as Trump is is saying that he's going to take all the all the uh, praise for any opening of the economy, but all the blame is going to go to the governors. That was the essence of what he said yesterday. And uh, Governor Pritzker of Illinois announced that uh, he, Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan, Mike DeWine of Ohio, Tony Evers of Wisconsin, Tim Walls of Minnesota, Eric Holcomb of Indiana, and Andy Bashir of Kentucky, two of them Republicans, announced they're going to work in close coordination to reopen the economy in the Midwest. We are seeing these regional partnerships, you know, come about, which is, you know, I think a good thing. Anyhow, I'll, I'll I've got a huge pile of news here for you. We'll be going through it as we continue through the next two and a half hours, or two hours and 45 minutes. We'll be back. Uh, it's Anything Goes Friday also. Right this, this is the Tom Hartman Program. Well, why, why do you think that these right-wing billionaires are funding these, uh, these modern Tea Party revolts? Why?